you will have your vpn server and that particular vpn server will you know will uh, ensure that this uh, tunneling happens and generally it uses ipsec protocol friends your perimeter network is the network which has to be protected at all cost from all kind of cyber attacks so in this video we will understand five ways five conventional ways with which we have been protecting our perimeter network but first of all we'll understand what is a perimeter network and then we'll go about discussing those five different ways which we use in combination to protect our network so basically perimeter network is the boundary between your internal network this is your internal network which is your private network and the internet so perimeter network would be somewhere like this okay so this is your parameter perimeter network the boundary between us and outside world now when we say outside world not everyone is a bad person in outside world if you are a company then you would be you would need your customers to connect to you your business to connect to you your remote employees connect to you your partners and vendors to connect the only people you don't want are these bad actors these attackers uh, who tries to penetrate and get into your perimeter network so let's start with these five methods to protect our network so the very first method is using a firewall now firewall is your first line of defense so you will put your firewall as the frontier through which any request will come into the network and firewalls could be of any type it could be a software firewall uh, on your windows and it could also be a hardware appliance deployed and your firewall could work at different layers of your osi model as well but the most important thing to consider is that a firewall can play multiple roles it can work as a proxy server it can work as a nat it can work as a dscp server it can play multiple roles as well so firewall is a must there are two kinds of firewall stateless and stateful stateless does not keep track of the connections okay it's not bothered what you are doing uh, in those connections okay but in a stateful firewall it does make sure that it follows the whole communication and then you know and the connection which is open and the moment that particular communication is over it makes sure that that connection is cut so obviously the stateful firewalls are more costlier more expensive while the state less are inexpensive so firewall is number one number two are proxy servers so now proxy servers again we have discussed proxy servers in our videos so proxy server will be an uh, you know will be an abstraction between your internal uh, devices and the outside uh, environment so any request so your proxy might be sitting somewhere here and any request coming will go to the proxy and then proxy will send it to the internet so it is kind of a camouflaging which happens wherein your ip address will not be exposed your identity will not be exposed but the proxy server uh, will be exposed to the outside world however you have to be very careful as to which proxy you are using is it your inbuilt in-house proxy or are you purchasing or are you using a free proxy because you cannot trust even the proxy service provider as well right so proxies are not very reliable in that sense because uh, if if you're not if you have not taken it from a you know correct source uh, it could be a risk or a threat as well so a good way uh, and an add on to your uh, security but not the best uh, to be honest so proxy servers yet is still very efficient uh, but you have to top it up with other security measures as well the third way to protect your perimeter network is by using what we call as a dmz which is called as a demilitarized zone demilitarized zone would be a zone which will be created so i'm just giving you some example maybe i'll put some pictures in this video as well to explain you better but for, for example there would be certain servers like your mail server maybe certain web servers which you want these business users to uh, access but at the same time you don't want them to enter your internal network so in that case you will create a dmz okay and then within this uh, within this dmz you will have your server whichever you want to expose and then whosoever wants it will come and maybe you will have a firewall here okay you will have a firewall and through that firewall it will come into this dmz and then this uh, you know the request will go back to the uh, back to the business okay so a demilitarized zone 
uh, is used very often as an isolation, as a specific chamber, is a, as a specific area uh, in which you could, uh, you know, you could come and contact certain devices, certain resources of the organization. So DMZ is uh, used uh, as one way to protect your perimeter network. The fourth one is honeypot. Now honeypot again is a very interesting concept where you will intentionally create a vulnerable uh, system and this system will look very vulnerable from outside the network, from the internet. You will intentionally keep it open, you will uh, intentionally make it insecure and you will put it inside the DMZ and it will be your pot, it will be your honey pot which will distract the attacker. So the attacker will detect this and try to attack it but you you will put your monitoring here, you will put your security monitoring here so that the moment it comes here, it gets trapped. So honey pots are generally put within the DMZ to attract and then there are also honey nets which are combination of honey pots. It's a network of these kind of uh, pots together. But a very important concept because it distracts the attacker, it lets them, you know, so it's called a decoy server uh, which deceits this particular actor to trust that this is the actual production server and they can come and attack it. So honey pot is uh, another way of uh, securing uh, your network. The fifth and the last one is your VPN, which is called as your virtual private network. So it is like a tunnel which you create between your internal network and your internet. So for example, your business or your customer wants to have a secure channel over the internet to connect to your uh, network, to connect to your uh, internal network as well as connect to your DMZ. You will, you can then create a VPN tunnel and that tunnel, okay, will will connect inside as well as it will connect here okay uh, don't get confused uh, maybe i'll put a diagram for this as well but you will have your vpn server and that particular vpn server will you know will uh, ensure that this uh, tunneling happens and generally it uses ipsec protocol okay ipsec protocol is used for all these vpn activities but way secure than your proxy okay so vpns are considered more secure and because it creates those tunnels and then there are multiple types of VPNs like side to side VPN. Generally when you are connecting to your cloud uh, environment also you see you will have your VPN uh, connectivity uh, from your organization's network to your cloud network. So these five ways are very very efficient, very traditional, very old ways uh, to protect and then not any uh, one of these will be making your uh, security 100%, okay? You have to use combination of these and then top it up with all the additional uh, systems which are coming in for cyber security like deploying, uh, you know, your intrusion detection, uh, detection system, intrusion prevention system, all those kind of things have to be deployed and then you have to continuously monitor your network. So. Uh, protecting your perimeter network becomes very important and by using these methods, these five methods, uh, you can do it quite efficiently. So I hope it was a useful video guys. If yes, give it a like, share it with your friends and family and let me know which are the other methods with which we can protect our perimeter network. Let me know in the comments and let me know if you want these kind of cybersecurity related videos on the channel because I recently ran a survey and almost 36% of the total audience voted for cybersecurity. So that's why I'm trying to bring security related videos more often. So yes guys, this brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and until next time, keep learning, keep sharing all your knowledge and yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.